Hey guys, welcome back to Lifestyle of the Pleva Nameless. I'm Joan, and guess where I'm at today? I'm at Coco's house, and we're going to be checking out her houseplant collection. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm Coco. Since you guys liked our Home Depot shopping video so much, decided to do a houseplant tour. Now I'm a beginner houseplant collector. I feel like. So most of my plants are very common, easy to find plants, and I figured it's a good idea to show other beginner collectors that you can have a nice little plant jungle in your house. And I think even though you say that your plants are pretty common, I do see like some unique ones, even though they may be like a common species. If you're a plant lover, please join us by hitting that subscribe button. We do lots of plant shopping content. First up, we're gonna start in my TV room slash kind of sunroom because of all the windows I have here. This is where the majority of my plants are. And you can see I have a plant shelf with a plant bench and these other shelves that my husband built for me. It's inspired by the Ikea lac shelves, but we needed it to fit in my space, so he custom made it. Let's start over on the plant shelf. At the top, I have a Florida green. It's on this little trellis here that I got from a set on Amazon. At first, when I got this kind of trellis, I didn't know what the heck to do with it. But once I put it into the plant, I was like, okay, I can just kind of wiggle through like each of the stems into each of the little sections here. So this has actually become one of my favorite trellis designs because you don't have to tie anything to the trellis. It just kind of holds it in by itself. And I love the Florida green because of the shape of the leaves. If you look at them, they look like little ghost shapes. So I love the characteristic of this plant. It's so fun. Florida green, it tends to kind of like just spike out. This way it makes it look very full. I like how once a new leaf comes out, there's already another one ready to spring up into place. So this is a fun plant. It's so easy to grow. And this one hasn't given me much problems with humidity. And I'll show you my pink princess in just a second. And that one's been giving me trouble. And my next little guy here, this is a poly of ladies. Sorry, my dog is whining in the background. And this one I got as a little bitty baby plant. It's still a baby plant, but it was even more baby with just like two leaves from a local nursery here. She just gave it to me for free. So nice. It's from Good Earth. And um, I have it in this little planter I got from Daiso for $1.50. I thought it's so cute. It even comes with a drainage hole. So such a great little pot and so whimsical. This is my pink princess philodendron. I found it in a local nursery here for a great price. However, it's my little drama queen diva. Like, look, this is one of my newer leaves and it came up torn. Oh no. And then this was the next leaf that came out janky. Didn't even form. It didn't even come out. And then this is the third janky leaf. So I asked people on a forum, what do I do? Why is my pink princess looking like this? I want it to thrive. And people told me, you know, don't cut it back. Just let it keep going, but give it better humidity. So I did. I started putting a little humidifier, but it's actually an oil diffuser. I didn't want a true humidifier here because I don't want my whole house being humidified. Because here in the South, humidity is like a bad thing, right? We're like, oh my God, it's so humid outside. So I use an oil diffuser, so it just puts out a little bit of humidity just for my plant. And this new leaf, it's looking like it's going to come in okay since I started doing that. I don't know, we'll see. Man, I was waiting for the pink leaves to come out. Well, I did get, a, this is one of the newer leaves since I got it. So it has a little pink in there. And this is the other leaf. It's got a little spot of pink here. And I love the pot that I got for it. I got it from Hobby Lobby. It looks very origami. Yeah, I like the geometric shape of it. Next one on my plant shelf is this little lady here. She is the Peperomia Hope. And she was hanging down a lot, um, all her little strands. So I got this trellis 
from Amazon and I'll put all the links of the things I can find for you that are still being sold in the description box so you can find it as well if you like it. So this is a heart shaped trellis that I have the Peperomia Hope on and I think it's looking so nice and full. It's actually loving the trellis. You can see all the new growth on the tips of the little strands. It definitely makes it look more compact because one of the problems that I have is it just grows long and then the leaves are like very spread out. And this just makes it look so lush with it on the trellis like this. Over here on this shelf, we have a couple snake plants. This is the starfish snake plant that I got from Joan actually. Thank you, Joan. <laughs> it was just one little baby spike, the, this one I think. And since then, it's started to fan out some into more of a starfish shape. I think it's looking so cute. Here is a whale fin snake plant. And it's the variegated version. It definitely has like really nice colors compared to the normal snake plants that I see. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Like, I just love looking at it. So, this snake plant I got from the Fred Reyes Nursery outside of Houston, Texas. And it actually came in a pot with four whale fins. I separated them, so it was a pot with all these in there. And it was only for $40. I was like, yes, this is definitely coming home with me. So what a steal, right? It's pretty much like $10 a whale fin. Do they grow like slower than normal snake plants? Snake plants just grow really slow in mm -hmm. general. They're just so pretty and sculptural, like I love it. The next shelf we have my string of turtles. So this is the main pot and this one over here, I'm actually propagating a little pot. It's gonna be for Joan. <laughs> Thank you. They're so easy to propagate too. Like you see how I have it right next to the mother pot. So I just drape the turtles that are hanging down into this pot and I hold it down with some pins and they'll form roots. Oh, and, and then, then make a whole new pot. later on you just cut it? Yeah, I'll just cut it off. Oh, wow, that's really convenient. Yeah, I feel like that's the best way to have the most success to propagation of turtles. And I love the patterns on it. Yeah, they and do look like turtle shells, right? Like, yeah. Look at that. And I see like some darker ones and then also like some of the lighter ones too. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they'd be fat. Like they have some thickness to it, but they're not like super chunky. It's just such a fun plant. And then down here, I have my philodendron my can. I love this one because it has the velvety leaves. You can see. It feels so nice. And if it gets sun stressed, it'll have like a copper tone to it. And this one I have on a trellis as well. It came in a set with the Peperomia Hope trellis. This one is a round one. And it's been loving the round trellis ever since I put it on there. It's grown so much. I'm like, look at the leaves in the sun. It's so pretty. Yeah, it definitely looks a lot like fabric. Uh-huh. It's put out a lot of new growth. I love seeing what it's gonna do. And like, here's the back of the plant. You can see that copper color I was talking about. It's so pretty. It's like a two-tone. Mm-hmm. And this plant shop I got from Amazon, and I love it because it's so compact. It actually has nine shelves on it. And the shelf actually has wheels, so that's also why I got it because it's easy to roll out if I need to clean underneath there. That is very convenient. Mm -hmm. And now over here, this is my Baltic Blue. I grew it as cuttings. I just started with three cuttings and then I just stick some props back in to make it fuller. And next to it, I have this ficus teneki here. I love the colors of the leaves, the variegation. Doesn't it look like an oil painting? Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. And every leaf comes out a little bit different. You never know what kind of combination you get. And there's a new leaf coming out, so I'm excited. I'm always scared of these plants. It's like this and then it kind of just shrivels up, you know? Why does it shrivel up? I don't know. Does your shrivel up? It's about to. Oh <laughs> no. They're like very finicky. They don't like to be moved a lot. So have you been moving yours a lot? Yeah, because they didn't do well, so I moved it outside. And then it got cold, so I gotta move it back in. I'm already, like, I'm They already... don't like that, Joan. They like to just stay in one place. I'm already doing so much for it. <laughs> and here's Bunny right here. She just got her hair cut, so she's not looking her best self, but she's still cute, right? Show Bunny some love. Say hi. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, we're gonna move on to my plant bench over here. He's been on his back leg for so long. I don't even know how you stand for so long. Give me a high five. Yeah! Whoa! Yeah. Talented dog. <laughs> Let's start over on this end here. We have another one of my Pilea peperomioides. This one I got from Joan. Mm -hmm. I took a baby off of her mother plant. Mm -hmm. And she said her mother plant hasn't been doing well since. Yeah, it looks like it's on the verge of dying, but it's like not. And I just wish it could like, you know, just rest. Maybe whenever you grow baby, so you give one back to me. <laughs> or maybe he can just find you a new plant. It's been hard. <laughs> there she you guys are. know, we did two plant shopping videos and I couldn't find any. And behind it, I have this Oxalis triangularis. I love it, guys. I discovered this plant online somewhere in a picture and I was thinking I must have it. It's just always doing its thing. Like, look, if you shake it, it's like flapping. Isn't that so cool? And I know some people grow it really bushy, but mine has never gotten bushy. Maybe it'll get there one day, but I like it not bushy actually, because this is more of a vibe to me, how it's kind of gangly like this. It has more character. Some new growth there. And I love the way these leaves look in the sun, how it kind of shimmers during the day. They have their leaves open like this, like a butterfly. But at night, they'll close up like a comb. And this plant I grew from a little corn. And it's done a lot for me. I love it. Oh my god, you guys. This is the Calicia Repens. And it's the Bianca one. And it's so pretty. Like, look at the pink leaves. If you guys love pink plants, you have to get this one. I don't know why it's not talked about more. It's in the Tradescantia family. Like the Wandering Jews and the Nanooks. Look at these leaves. I love it. Sometimes you get like completely pink ones like this. Mm, they look like mini blooms. Yeah, it's just so beautiful. Now it was growing leggy for me for a while and all I did was chop off all the legginess and just stuck it back into the pot and it grew new roots and it's become so bushy for me. I love it. And I have this in another bird pot. You see, it's kind of getting covered, but it's so cute. I love this pot. It has so much character. And next to that, we have my little succulent assortment that I made. Um, so what it was, was I had a bunch of different succulents that I needed to consolidate space. So I just stuck them all into one pot. <laughs> Y'all are making a bunch of noise. Can you guys chill a little bit? Like calm down? So I have some jade here. These are so easy to grow. And then I think this is an Echeveria. It looks like one. And then this is the Crustula Golem. It always reminds me of Lord of the Rings, the Golem from that movie. And then these are little rosettes. I think maybe Craftivaria. Now over here, I have some Cebu Blue cuttings potted up. I got these cuttings from the Good Earth Nursery again. Tori was so nice to give these to me. And I feel like it's doing really well. I've got some new growth out of it. And I'm hoping one day to make it a big bushy plant. And next to that, we have Dogtail Cactus. It was actually mislabeled as dragon fruit cactus and I was told that's incorrect. And it's so easy to take care of. I don't really do anything with it. You just water it once in a while and it grows. Here is a succulent garden. I got this fairy garden pot from Amazon. And I'll put the link for you in the description box if you want to make one too. I did it a couple years ago, so the succulents have kind of grown out. So they're more established. It was like little tiny cute succulents in there. And I think it's a great gift to make for someone too. You can get the pot and get a bunch of little baby succulents. Make a little fairy garden for them and decorate it however you like. Over here is a Hoya that I got a few months ago. It's the Hoya Macrophylla Variegated. When I got it, I repotted it into this pot and it's doing so well. And I know you're not supposed to repot Hoyas. Like everyone says, no, don't touch it. Just leave it in the nursery pot. But 
and I do whatever I want. And it's worked out. Like, it's doing just fine. I think as long as you don't disturb the roots too much when you're repotting it, just be careful. And it does great. Since I brought it home, it's given me so much new growth. Like, look at these new stems that's growing out. And soon it'll be filled with leaves. And y'all, look at the size of this leaf. Like, isn't that amazing? I know now why it's called a macrophylla. It's macro. Because, yeah, super macro. It's like big as my hand. Look at this. I love it. And next we can show you some of my succulents that I have on my windowsill. Over here, I have, I think it's called the ice plant. There's another plant that's also called the ice plant, but this is also called an ice plant. And it's so cute. I just love how it grows like little pebbles on a branch. It does look like little green ice cubes, right? I got it as two little cuttings from an Etsy seller. And it's actually grown a lot for me, believe it or not. I know it's still small, but it was even smaller than that when I first got it. And next to that, I have bear paw. This bear paw is a rescue. When I first got it from Lowe's, there was maybe two paws on there. Each paw was only a couple millimeters wide. And I was like, oh no, you gotta come home with me. I'm gonna rescue you. And look, I grew it into these big old fat delicious paws. They were so cute. I actually think this is the variegated bear paws because I know it's sun stress right now, but if you look really close, you can see like stripes on the paw. And this one too. This is one of my favorite succulents. It's so cute. It literally looks like a bear paw. It does. And these over here, these are my moonstones. I love the pastel colors that the moonstones have and how fat they are. They're so chunky, right? Mm -hmm. So it has that farina powder, you guys know, over the petals. And so I try not to touch it because it's like a sunscreen for them. It protects them from the sun damage. So cool. And the water damage. I don't know what this one's called, but when it gets sun stressed, it has this pink color. This one might be thirsty because it looks like it's wrinkly. And there are these hairs growing out of them. So funny, right? And this one is my panda plant. These are so cool because they're fuzzy. This one doesn't have the farina, so you can actually touch it. <laughs> Look, little pandas. And I love succulents, y'all, because they're so easy to take care of. Like, I don't have to do anything with them. And because they stay in these small pots, they just stay the tiny size. This one, I think it's a type of Horthia. It might be called Tiger, I'm not sure, because of the stripes. I like how it grows up. Yeah, this one grows like a tower, right? Mm hmm And over here is another one. I don't know what this one's called, but this is more a rosette shape. And it's kind of stretched out a little bit. It probably needs more light. But I'm giving it as much as I can right now. It's in a south-facing window, so unless I put it outside, it's just going to be like this. It is growing pretty straight, I would say. Yeah, and I like the sun stress color of this. It's like this orangish red color. I think it's so pretty. And over here, I have a Horthia. I love how the tips of them have the sun windows to let the sun into the plant. I think it's so cute. And this is actually more low light, so it doesn't actually need as much light as I'm giving it. You can put it in a darker location if you want, and it'll still grow well. And over here on this windowsill, this is one of actually my favorites because of the color that it has. It gets very sun stressed. And I actually cut off the tops of a few of the stalks you can see. That one, that one, and that one. And you can see the new growth coming out. And I just stuck the tops of it back into the pot to root it up. I think it's doing well. Now this one, I have to be so careful because it just drops leaves like super mm. easily. You can see all these leaves that drop and sometimes they grow into little babies like that one. That's nice. I like how it's super light. Yeah, I like the pastel color that it has. And this one here, if you saw our latest plant shopping video, you see I got this at Lowe's. This is the string of buttons. It's so cute. I repotted it into this white pot and it's doing so well. It actually looks like it's doubled in size, even though it didn't. Now it did get more sun stress. You can see the pink edges ever since I put it in the windowsill. I think it's looking so pretty. 
And I can't wait till the strings come down and become like a real string of violins. And over here, I have a string of pearls that's variegated. However, variegated string of pearls apparently are very prone to reverting. So I feel like this one has pretty much reverted. Mm -hmm. This one, these new little pearls here, they look variegated though. There's still some hope. Yeah, there's still some variegation, but not a whole lot because a lot of it did revert on me. Can it go back to the variegation? Uh, once it turns green, it's not going to turn back white, but you can see this strand is still variegated. You can still see the whites in them. And this pot that I have it in doesn't even have drainage holes. And I know that's a cardinal sin for you succulent lovers out there to put a succulent in a pot without drainage holes. See? Nothing. I'm just really careful with how much water I put in there. I've had it so long that I just kind of know how much water it needs. So it's not that bad to do it right, you guys. Over here, I have some lithops. I never know what to do with these. I love the way they look because they look like butts. So they're commonly known as butt plants. And these, they've been splitting for like, I don't know, six to eight months now. And it's still splitting. I don't know what to do, guys. Like I've even given it a little bit of water at one point because I didn't know what else to do. I know you're not supposed to give it water while it's splitting, but it sat there so long looking like that, that I did it anyway. What do you mean by splitting? You see how the leaves, like this one is like V-shaped with two new leaves coming up in between. Oh. That's splitting. Same thing over here. These two were the old leaves and then they split. Mm -hmm. And this one actually made twins. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> They're so temperamental. I never know what to do with them. Like I actually had another one here that died, so I pulled it up. And next we have some of my cutest plants. These are baby toes. Don't they look like toes? Mm -hmm. I actually have two different kinds here. So these are the skinnier baby toe variety, and then these are the big fat toes. And these seem to be growing well for me. I don't know why the lithops give me trouble. But these I just water whenever I see the stalks getting a little wrinkly. I just give it some water and it does fine. Toes and butts. <laughs> <laughs> I love my body parts. Here's my regular string of pearls. This is one of two of my string of pearls that are just the regular variety. I did film how I repotted the string of pearls into its current pot and it was super easy the way I did it. So I'll put that video up at some point in the future. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video. These are actually self-watering pots, but I don't use the self-watering feature. I just like the way they look. People say to bottom water their string of pearls and I never do that. I just top water them and they do fine for me. And over here, I have some burl's tails. They're so cute. And I love how there's different shades of green in the actual burl's tails. It just looks so pretty that way. Very artistic. And it's really full too. Yeah. I got this from a Lowe's, I believe, in a basket. And I just repotted it in here. Here is the ruby necklace. And it's called that because in the sun, it turns this purplish color, like each of the little leaves. The strands stay purple, to me anyway. And these are so easy to propagate and root of. I actually gave Joan a baby one recently. What's wrong with it? Is it not doing well? Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. Are you watering it? I did. They're so easy. And then all the strands started drying up. <laughs> what? I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Because I got it used to the soil for like a month before I gave it to you. <laughs> it just doesn't like my house. It must Does it not. need humidity? Because I don't. It's just that my house stays at 45 to 46 percent humidity. Over here, it just gets ambient humidity. You can see some of them that got more sun. They're just completely purple. And actually, they can also turn purple with cold stress. When I first bought this plant from a nursery, it was outside below 50 degrees at the time and all the strands were just completely purple. What I found out was really cool about these is that mm -hmm. like whenever they start growing, like you'll yeah. see these cotton looking things on the pearls. Oh yeah? I yeah. never noticed that. 
I guess I don't pay that much attention to mine. Now this one I do notice uses a lot of water. Like that's why I actually use the self-watering feature on this one. So I have the wick coming out. It already drank up all that water I gave it. Jeez. Yeah, it loves water. And now we'll start on my plant shelves that my husband built for me so lovingly. Thank you. Up here at the very top, we have the mistletoe cactus. It's a rip salis. And I love the shape of this. All the leaves, they look like little pencils waving around. What I love about houseplants is the variety of them. Like that's what catches my eye. And that's what I collect is by the looks of them, how they have different varieties of leaves and colors. And that's kind of how I got into collecting plants because different ones are just special to me. And the next one down is the Rick Rack Cactus. I love the curvy shape of the leaves. It's also called a fishbone cactus. It just looks so wacky to me, right? It doesn't even look like real. It's kind of crazy what nature does. I like how some like stick up and then others are just kind of hanging. Yeah, it does whatever it wants. And I have it in this Chilavera pot from Mexico. And I think it goes really well together. And here we have, I mean, Jula pothos. And the main Jula pothos is pretty much my favorite pothos right now because of the way the leaves are. They're more rounded than other potho leaves. You see, they're like fatter and I love all the white variegations in it. And I think it's doing really well. Like this strand is starting to trail down. I got it as a very small pot, like one of those $7 pots you get from Lowe's or Home Depot. And I think it's doing great. It's loving the sun. I have it right in front of the south facing window and all the leaves are looking fine. I'm kind of surprised how much sun this pothos can take because you always hear about pothos being low light plants, but this one loves the sun. And down here on this last shelf, we have the variegated string of hearts. Ooh, what is this? What is that? Oh, is that a flower? What is that guys? It looks like a piece of gum stuck to my string of hearts. It has like a little thing growing out of it. Oh, I see. It looks like more hearts though, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But this has been doing so well for me. I got it as a tiny pot from, I think, Etsy. I got a flower, guys. This is the first time I noticed it. I like how the way it like drapes down. It almost looks like curtains. It's so romantic. The string of hearts, I feel like, can take a lot of water because I water it as much as my regular house plants that are not the succulent type of leaves. It just drinks it all up. And I actually tried to make the tops of it fuller by putting like another strand, just folding it back in like this and then holding it down with some hairpins. So you can get a fuller plant that way. And over here in my other plant shelf, we have the Christmas cactus up top. This is one of the oldest house plants I have. I don't even know how old this is. Maybe like, gosh, five years old? Like it's starting to get woodiness down on the bottom mm. at the base. Doesn't it look like that? Don't I call it like a heritage plant or something? Oh, like you can pass it down? Mm -hmm. I've seen 70 year old ones that people pass down from like, their grandmother it's crazy i think it actually needs more sunlight than i'm giving it or maybe even more water to get it to flower because it didn't flower for me last year i was kind of upset it flowered for me other years maybe i need to take better care of you now this one here this is a special plant jonah and i got this plant together this is the hoya crimson princess and we split it into two Again, we committed the cardinal sin of repotting a Hoya. But you can do it, guys. Like, it doesn't kill it. So I have half the plant, and she has half the plant. And it's doing so well. Like, look at all this draping going on. I love it. It's growing a lot. I wonder what this is. Is this just part of the peduncle? It's not as pink as the other ones. See, like, that's why, like, I was talking about my plants. Mine has, like, a few that's pink, but then they also have a few that's just dark. If you give it lots of light, it gets more variegated and it gets more pink. 
I love Hoyas. I didn't know I would love Hoyas so much until I started getting Hoyas. And this was my first Hoya. If you love succulents and you want to get into houseplants, I feel like Hoya is like a next logical step because the leaves are kind of succulent because they, they're not so flimsy. If you want to dip your toes into houseplants, start with Hoyas and see how you do because you don't have to water them that often. Like they don't mind being dry for a period of time. And here I have another string of pearls. I have two because I ordered two of them. I thought I was gonna end up killing one of them, so I had a backup. So that's why I have two. They didn't die. I love how they look like little peas, right? Like I just wanna eat them. And I have it up higher so that my dogs don't eat them. Cause I see them sniffing it sometimes and they get interested. And down here, I have the reverse variegated Hoya carii. I know this is not a common plant, but I made an exception and I kind of splurged on this a little bit because I love it so much. I love the heart-shaped leaves. Uh, how much do you mean by splurge? Um, I think it was with shipping from an Etsy seller. It was $40. Whoa. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I went out there. <laughs> And since I've gotten this plant in the mail, it's put out these two new leaves for me. Oh, they're huge. Yes. I think it's loving where it is right now. And there's another growth point right there that's starting up. So I'm really excited. Awesome. Yeah. It's cool how like it just grows the stem and then split the leaves. Mm-hmm. We come to more of my windowsill plants. These are some of my cacti and some more succulents. Over here, we have a Kalanchoe the paddle leaf plants. In this pot, it was actually some boring, like a goldish color pot and I just painted over it, made it my own. Look, there's a little baby in here. I didn't even notice. How cute. And it's got the farina on it. So um, it's got dust, but I don't want to take off the farina. So I don't want to mess with it. Just stay dirty. Yeah, you just stay kind of dusty. And the edges got sun stress, so you can see a little bit red around the edges. And over here, this is my Apuntia, the bunny ear. Oh, your bunny ear is so hairy. Is it? Yeah. Maybe it's dog hair. It might not even be hair from the plant itself, because I have three dogs. But it makes it look very snowy, which yeah. is really cute. It's got some new growth at the tips, I see. Little baby bunny ears growing up. So basically, I just buy cacti that just catch my eye. I don't know much about cacti, so I don't know all their names. I'm sorry, but I just buy them because they look interesting. This one here is the brain cactus. They look like brains, right? They say it's prone to rotting if you accidentally get the ridges wet. When I'm watering it, I'm just really careful that it doesn't get wet in the middle. Does this one get sun stress too? Yeah, I think it is sun stress. I yeah. think maybe that's why it's turning orange. It looks cute though. <laughs> it's a brain. Yeah. It's so adorable. I feel like sometimes you just intentionally want them to have some stress to get that like depth mm -hmm. of color. So I have butts, toes, brains, ears. Oh, and heart. Oh yeah. <laughs> and these three cacti I got from Ikea as a set. I don't really know the names of them. I feel like this one's the blue torch. I'm not completely sure, but they look really cute and they caught my eye. Be careful, you're gonna get poked. I was gonna like try to lift it, but I wouldn't. Yeah, it's fine. I really like this one too because they look like Cheetos. Oh yeah. And this one has like that one that just shoots out. Yeah, the tallest one and then the babies around it. And next to it, these are a couple of my succulents. They're doing really well. These are jelly beans. When they get sun stress, they turn pink like this. And then these are their crinkle leaf succulents. They look like lettuce to me. Like I can eat them. Salad. You got candy, you got lettuce. <laughs> succulents are just so fun. Like they look so quirky. I love collecting them. Now over here is one of my oldest house plants. I grew this fiddle leaf fig from when it was about three feet tall. And it's just gotten super tall over time. Mm -hmm. The leaves are really big. Yeah. 
Sometimes they'll drop leaves and I don't know, I just go with it. I don't try to make it do what it doesn't want to do. If it drops its leaves, it drops its leaves. Like I'm not trying to stress out over it, you know? Mm -hmm. But hey, at least it's got like some new leaves right here. Yeah. I like having plants as a hobby. I don't want it to become something that I stress out over and give me anxiety. So that's why I have the number of plants that I have. Like I feel like I can't have more than that. Like I don't know how people take care of like 200 house plants. How do y'all do it? Don't say that because you might turn into one one day. <laughs> I don't know. But You're right now I feel like I have as many as I can handle. How long does it take to water all your plants? I kind of do it over like a two day period, like an hour at a time. So two hours total a week. I try to get plants that aren't like low maintenance. Over here is my philodendron gloriosum throw <laughs> because I don't have a philodendron gloriosum. So I get the blanket. Isn't it so pretty? It's so soft. And it's the thin kind of blanket so you don't get too hot in it. Especially when I have dogs, they just make me super hot. I'll link this in the description box if y'all are interested, but it's so cute. I love this throw. Okay guys, so that was everything in my TV room slash plant room. So we'll go over to a different part of the house to look at my other plants. So we're over here in my bedroom. We have this money tree. I read that it's best for feng shui to have this plant in the most southeast corner of the house. So this is the most southeast corner as I can get in my house. At first it was struggling. I was getting browning leaves and I noticed there was a tie here. So I cut it loose like this. And so far since I've done that, it's done a lot better for me. Like I don't get too much browning leaves anymore. So I think it was suffocating it. If you get a money tree and it's giving you problems, try that. See if it does better. And over here is another snake plant in my collection. It is the elephant toothpick, or sometimes called the African spear. I just love the way it looks. It's so wild, right? Here is a little string of turtles that I propagated myself from my mother plant you saw out there. It's in a turtle pot. Exactly, like I saw this pearl pot and you have to put string of turtles in it. Like what else are you gonna grow in that? Very cute. And you can see, I still have a paper clip in there from when I propagated. I was holding it down so it can root up. And here in my living room is one of my favorite plants. It's not even a real plant, I know guys, but I gotta show you anyway. This is a bird of paradise. I don't have a bird of paradise, but I do now. It was so much fun to put together, guys. You guys have to do this. Like even if you're not into Legos, but if you're into plants, get you a Lego plant. They're so much fun. And it's always in bloom. These crack me up all the time. Yes, the dart was hilarious. And it said it was over a thousand pieces, but I literally think they counted every piece of dart. So in my living room, I have the lower light plants because I have a porch out there. So it keeps some of the sun from coming in through the windows. This is probably my oldest house plant of all the plants in my collection because I think I got this from my parents. A long time ago from their cuttings and up top you can even see look at this new leaf that it's giving me do you see that that variegation and flanking the other side of the fireplace I have another pothos I just love them guys like look at these leaves they're so pretty to me I feel like pothos are definitely underrated and they're so easy to take care of and it's so quick to give you like a tropical vibe. Up top, I have some snake plant cuttings that I just stuck into a vase with some water. They haven't grown any roots yet, I don't think. They're taking forever. It's been in here for several weeks now and still no roots. Hmm. However, I just love the way it looks. Doesn't it look so sculptural? just sitting like this like i don't mind and over here this is a north facing window in front of that i have a hanging pot of philodendron brazil i love how each of the leaves look a little bit different with the stripes and the striations and it's such an easy care plant 
It looks a lot like the pothos, but the way it drapes is different. I feel like it drapes more in a lazy way, more lackadaisical. Because the pothos is more sprightly. It's more puffy. These drape more lying down. I have some fake succulents, but they look great here, right? I had to put them here because nothing's really gonna grow. So that's why I have fake ones. No one will ever know, but now y'all know. And over here in my living room window, it's about 12 feet back from a porch. So they get not that much light. I have a Syngonia white butterfly that I chopped off. Let me show you. It was getting really leggy. So I chopped off the tops of them and I'm rooting them up in this glass jar. It looks like it's doing really well. Yeah, look at all these roots. Maybe it could just stay in water. I could probably just keep it in water. But look at these. It's starting to get baby leaves. I'm so excited. Aww. It took a few weeks though, but it's getting there. I'm trying to get a more bushy plant. So I'm gonna eventually put the cuttings in to here and let these grow too. And over here, this might be a lost cause guys. I don't know. It's a Peperomia frost. It's kind of wilting. Like, it's not doing well. I don't know what to do. It actually had this other stalk in there with it. This this is a Baltic blue, so don't worry about that. But it had this other stalk with it. And when I was repotting it, this whole stalk just fell out and it had zero roots on it. The roots fell off of it? It rotted or something. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fault, guys. That takes some talent. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Joan, thank you. So I'm trying to revive it. Seeing if it'll grow roots. It might. And over here is a little warty. It really likes water, I find. So I potted it up in this pot that doesn't even have drainage holes. And I feel like it's doing fine. I like how your leaves are like more fat. I feel like they love water. Cause like mine, mm -hmm. they are taller, but mm -hmm. it's way skinnier. Yeah. And look guys, in my last plant shopping video, I mentioned I have an orchid that I've had for years and it's not flowered since the day I got it. And I've kept it and kept it for years, at least three to four years now. And look guys, <gasps> I saw this the other day. Like what is that? That's a stalk, right? Oh Tell me that's a flower stalk. I'm so excited. So this is a testament, do not give up hope. Your orchid can flower again. It can, because look at this. I really think that's a flower stalk, right? And you know, I committed another cardinal sin with orchids. It was in sphagnum moss, nothing, no flower. And then I put it in a orchid bark mixture, nothing. So I threw a handful of just regular potting mix in with the orchid bark. So it has about 10% dirt. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to grow orchid in dirt, but look at this guys, doesn't it mean it's doing well? Like ever since then it started growing a little flower stalk. Maybe it just needed more nutrients. Like I know people have all these rules and stuff, but come on guys, like look at this. Sometimes you just gotta break the rules. It does things for you. I can't believe you kept it alive for that long. Yeah. Over here, we have some more cuttings. I already showed you a couple of them, but this one is just a Peperomia Hope that fell off when I was trying to put it around the trellis. So I'm seeing if it roots up. And this is just some basil. Because the weather, it's getting cold outside and I wanted to just have some basil. And it's rooting up fine. And here are some cuttings of my Scandapsis that I'm going to show you next. They're so easy to root up, you just stick them in water and let it sit for a few weeks. This is my Scandapsis that I took the cuttings from. It's the Scandapsis Trivia Moonlight. It's finicky, guys. Like, it's one of my slowest growing plants. And I've actually lost a lot of leaves on it since I've gotten it from the Costa Farm pots. It's just not done well for me. I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out. It does have some new growth. So maybe it'll do okay. We'll see. I'm gonna put those new cuttings in when it's ready to give it a more bushy look. Now here is one of my newer plants I got from our Home Depot shop with me video. It's my Aglini Mint by Cow. I put it in this new pot. It's loving the low light. It doesn't need a whole lot of light at all. 
Here we have my jade golem plant. It's doing so well. Ever since we went through a hurricane a couple years ago and it was neglected in the house with really high temperature and really high humidity because no electricity for a month, it just sprang up like this into a tree. It's amazing. Look at how thick the trunk is. It's a fat baby. It looks like kind of like those bonsai trees, right? I just love the look of it. So over here is what I call my Dr. Seuss plant. It's a Dracaena marginata. Yeah, it's just like poof, poof, poof. Doesn't it look like the plants from the Lorax? This is one of the easiest care house plants you can get. I definitely recommend the Dracaena marginata. If you don't have much light in your home. Ooh, this is really cool. Right? It's like braided. Just like Dr. Seuss. <laughs> and we're going up high. This is my lemon lime maranta. It's a prayer plant. I know some people have problems with prayer plants, but this one has not given me much trouble. So if you want a maranta, maybe give the lemon lime one a try. It just kind of hangs down. I heard that it's better to let it hang than to put it on a trellis which is why I have it hanging like this. Look at the leaves. It's like another one where it looks like it's hand painted. They just look so stunning. So up here is also one of my newer finds from our low shopping video. This hanging plant caught my eye. Isn't it so magnificent? I can't guys, this was $20 from Lowe's and you get this huge bush. So this is the leaf that I'm wondering if it's a Hawaiian poso. Is that even a thing, guys? It's a huge leaf. Sometimes you see a plant and you're like, this has to come home. Like, I don't care where I'm putting it. I'm gonna make space for it. <laughs> I have all these ceiling plants hanging from hooks that I got from Amazon. So I'll put that link in the description box below. I feel like they're very strong. They're made of metal and they come with anchors with them. And also here in my living room, this is my little ZZ plant. It's the Zenzi ZZ. I think it's adorable. I know ZZ is very common, but the Zenzi ZZ was so hard for me to find. Our Lowe's got it in stock and I was so excited. The leaves grow really close together. I love how that looks. And it does really well for me in this low light. I think it's the perfect plant for my living room. Now, let me show you one of my fails the bane of my existence. This is the Monstera Deliciosa, like you all know. I had it in the house and it wasn't doing well for me. So I'm trying it outside. That's why it's out here. It wasn't always out here. And I get so jealous when every time I see online people bragging about their ginormous Monstera Deliciosa. And I'm just thinking, Oh, but mine's so puny and it's dying a slow death. I don't know guys. I feel like sometimes certain plants just don't like us and we don't know why. They're like people, right? Not everyone likes you and you just have to accept that. So maybe the Monstera Deliciosa just doesn't like me. It's a plant journey. <laughs> now over here in my foyer, I have a snake plant. It used to be much bigger, but it wasn't doing very well for me. I guess it needed more light, maybe? So I repotted it into a smaller pot, which is why it's in a pot within a pot. And I got this light for it. It's not a grow light, but it is like a broad spectrum LED light. And I think it's giving it enough to where it's sustaining. And then here is a jade succulent. I have two different kinds in here. It's got the regular old jade that's just completely green and the variegated kind that has the lighter green edges. I love the pot that it comes in, how it's like kind of stony and in a square shape. It adds like a really good contrast to the curviness of the leaves. And over here on my staircase, I have a snake plant here. It's the same one as the one in the foyer. I just love the pot that I put it with that I found at TJ Maxx on clearance, which is the best, right? And you guys, I just wanna show you a couple of plants that I have out here. These plants are outside right now because it does need a lot of sun, but when it gets colder, I'm gonna bring it inside the house. 
Right here is the Adenium, the Desert Rose. This one is the Double Noble. And look at all the blooms. I think I have nine blooms currently. And I'm working on 10. Can I get to 10, please? That's so amazing. If you don't have a Desert Rose, definitely get one. They're so easy. With the heat outside, I give it a little bit of water once a week. And that's it. And then over here is the Frizzle Sizzle. Interesting name. Yeah, it's so cute. It actually grows from a bulb. I've repotted it, that's why I know it's a bulb. Are you sure these are not green onions? They're not green onions, Joan, really? <laughs> it's the Frizzle Sizzle. They're so cute, and the more sun that it gets, the more it curls up. So, so if you have it in a lower light environment, it's not gonna be as curly, it'll just be a little bit curly. Do they smell? What? Let me I've see. never, I don't smell my plants. Because they just remind me of like, like those garlic chive plants. You can't eat it, Joan, do not eat this. I know, I'm just trying to smell and see if it like is similar. Joan would be the person <laughs> sitting there eating her string of pearls. <laughs> okay guys, that's it. That's all my house plants. Did y'all count how many there were? I didn't, I don't know how many I have. I like counted up to like maybe 40 something and then I lost count. Really? Yeah. You were counting? Yeah, I was counting all your little pots. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked our video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We really need your help to help us reach 1K goal subscribers by the end of this year. 1,000, please, please, please. <laughs> and make sure to follow us on our socials. We post a lot of plant shopping content on there as well. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Lifestyle, Lifestyle of the Fleet and Nameless. Bye. Bye.